Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a fun, useful video. Um, in this case, I want to look at best practices for data quality checks. Um, in this case, with Soda IO, um, I find Soda is a really nice mix of, you know, hey, not truly just, hey, you're off on your own on this, like great expectations, has more of a UI, has more of a, you know, kind of production grade, enterprise grade features, but doesn't break the bank. Um, and a lot of these checks I'm gonna show you how to do and build data quality check can be applied to other data quality checking frameworks. Uh, why I chose Soda is it's really easy to integrate Soda into your existing data pipelines, um, which is the best way to do data quality checks, right? Is have them happen organically as part of an existing pipeline. Don't try to create specific workflows where you're gonna take data out and do data quality checks on it because you wanna do data quality checks as close to the point of ingestion as possible. So I'm gonna go through some live code examples of exactly how you can implement really good, robust data quality checks within your pipelines using Soda, but really using any kind of data quality tool. If you like these videos, please like, subscribe, join my Patreon, it helps me out a ton. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing you wanna start doing, you know, even if you're experimenting with Soda, uh, is just pip install Soda. Um, so if you're just using Soda Core, their free offering, um, just pip install Soda Core, then whatever database you're gonna be running your data quality checks appended to that, because every database has you know, slightly different variations in how they handle different data types. Um, and so Soda has different offerings for different databases, you just gotta specify and install that specific offering. So make sure you have Soda Core installed for whatever database you're gonna be using. Um, and then we can start developing our different data quality checks. And then we have a CLI that we can use locally to run and test uh, these data quality checks as well. Um, so just really useful to have when you're just experimenting uh, and first starting off. Now, the first best practice I have for you is really honestly just about organization. Um, it's really important with Soda, especially with a large company, right, is you have you know, your global Soda folder, but then you will wanna split it out into different sections. Um, specifically, you're gonna to wanna to have a folder for uh, configuration, not a file for configuration. So we're gonna have a new folder here called this configuration. Where we're gonna store our configuration files. We're also gonna create a separate folder for our data quality checks. Um, and then also we're gonna create another folder for kind of utility and helper scripts as well. Um, if you're using Soda Cloud, also recommend you include a Soda, Soda Cloud folder, um, and this can allow you to set the configuration to plug into from your local machine to your Soda Cloud environment and pull information from there. Um, now, the first thing you want to do when you're setting up a Soda environment, right, is configure it to actually have a database that it can connect to, um, because otherwise, how are you going to run your data quality checks? So what you're going to want to do is go in your configuration folder and create a new file called configuration dot yaml um, and this will be the file either for all of your configuration files or if you want to split it up into one config file per database you can do that i'm more of a fan of the one config file for all of your connections just to make pathing and all that a lot easier now the way i'll typically set up my configuration file is something like this right so here you'll see i have you know my data source whatever that data source is called in this case analytics warehouse that's going to be a postgres database um, and here I'm actually going to be pulling the environment variables I've said of Postgres host, Postgres user, password, um, because I want to have these be secure variables that aren't exposed in plain text. Um, and then some more thing, you know, if I wanted to add another dude base like Snowflake, same thing, add those as environment variables and then also specify any details around, hey, what data warehouse, uh, what database, what role do I want to use, uh, and also any session parameters as well. These are really good to make sure you have common best practice session parameters for things like timeout um, and tags for all your queries, set them via the config file, via the connection, and then they're gonna be applied to all the checks and all the operations that Soda runs from here. Now, let's start writing some checks. So the first thing you wanna do for the checks, and this is just kind of general best practices, right, is make sure you have very clear self-documenting checks. So here we'll call this, you know, staging, stage orders, Dot yaml so stage underscore your dot yaml and then here you'll see we have our check for stage order um, and here make sure your names are always descriptive so stage orders you know hey this is going to have records so this check that checks are there records in this file is called has records and um, seems simple and silly but a lot of people forget to do this and just will you know have some kind of like uh, acronym or something Imagine you're building these checks for someone that has no idea what check you wrote. You want to be able to look at it and see, hey, this is what that check is doing, 
right? So here we have another check for freshness, checking the updated at, where here we're giving it attributes like a category for freshness, the severity, where if our data isn't fresh, it's a super big problem, the owner, and also a Slack channel that we might wanna send these alerts out to. Um, and then also for something, you know, like, hey, failure conditions and samples. So here what we're gonna do is when the missing count is greater than zero, then we're going to fail. Um, and if it's not, if it's you know not greater than zero, awesome, it's gonna check. Um, and we're gonna sample actually 10 files to make sure that there's no null values within those 10 files. Now, another good best practice when working with Soda is to use global variables that you can use for different data quality checks. So here, let's do something like a shared checks.yaml. And actually what we're doing here, right, is similar to how I have you know environment variables that I'm pulling in for my connections, I'm also going to set things like global freshness thresholds, global threshold warnings to say, hey, you know, when something is older than a day, older than a week, then it's going to, you know, be flagged as behind the times, right? And that lets me update the freshness threshold in a single location for, you know, a global array of data quality checks. You know, at really at, you know, scale, you're going to be running hundreds, maybe even thousands of data quality checks. And so having one place where you can update, hey, you know, what do I define as a freshness threshold uh, is really important. So you don't have to go through all those, you know, hundreds of data quality checks and actually manually determine, hey, has this missed its threshold? Um, and also checking to make sure, hey, you know, what is that set as? And now manually recoding it to whatever your new preference is. Um, Some more thing for something like max law du duplicates or minimum expected rows as well. Just really best practice to set these at a global level, then change once and it's changed everywhere. Now, another really good best practice is to use filters to make sure you're only ever checking the most relevant data and the data that you actually need to validate, right? So, you know, let's say I have one massive table where I'm constantly, you know, appending new data to do it. Um, and here, you know, if I wanna do data quality checks on it, I don't wanna check all of that data. I just wanna check the most recent data, right? So you wanna have filters like saying, hey, only check the data within the last seven days or up to a thousand. Um, or I want to check specific segments of the data. Maybe I only wanna look at my premium customers that have actually completed a transaction. Here, I can check that specific segment. Um, or partition aware checks. You know, if I only want to check the partition for a, a single date, right? This is gonna help your data quality checks run a lot faster because instead of parsing all, of our, all those partitions, it's just focused down to a single partition. Um, and again, helps you just run these a lot more efficiently. Now, let's say you want to check for completeness, right? Now, this is, you know, kind of can be a complex task. So if I go completeness.yaml, right, you wanna make sure that not only a single file, but every file has complete user IDs. Um, you want to make sure that every file, every, every column within a table has all the correct uh, names, right? And so here, you're defining checks for user profiles, right? To say, hey, you know, if there's any missing, uh, you know, names for user ID, flag that. Uh, if I, you have over 5% of your user emails missing, flag that. Call and completeness as well, making sure that, hey, the missing count for all of these checks is zero. Um, and this is, you know, trying a really good feature of Soda, right, is having functions like missing counts. You don't need to define the checks for missing values yourself, but instead you have functions that you can easily call and just say, hey, let me know if there's any missing count, if there's any missing values, or if you're reaching a certain threshold of missing percentages within a column. Uh, really useful tooling and also just obviously important to have to make sure that you're not getting hit by sudden, you know, just in not easily exposed null values or missing values in a given data set. Now, next thing, and another great example of kind of showing off some of the built-in functionality of SQL of Soda um, is duplicate checks, right? So here you can also have, you know, not only missing checks, but duplicate checks, uh, duplicate count to make sure that, you know, you don't have more than one of a given value for different things like IDs or SKUs to make sure that your data isn't being duplicated. Uh, really simple one, but also just, you know, really nice that you don't have to kind of manually define the logic for this. You just can run duplicate count and it'll do it for you. Now, another important check is for data validity, right? And so this is, you know, capturing the bad data that isn't, you know, blank or isn't corrupted, but instead just doesn't perform the data that you expect, right? So here, you know, let's say, you know, I want to look at order total. I always expect this to be over zero. Um, and so here, what I'm saying is a valid min is zero. Um, and that means that if there's any kind of value that's 
less than minimum or then less than zero, then that's going to be flagged as invalid. Um, you can see I can set these checks for you know the quantity range uh, and also things like hey, is this the proper email format? Right? Do I see a sequence of characters followed by an at symbol, followed by another sequence of characters, followed by a dot, and then you know another sequence of characters for the com? So you can get really complex in making sure that hey, you know all of this data that I'm using is conforming to the exact type and the exact format that I'm expecting. So that if someone entered their email incorrectly or their phone number incorrectly, it'll be flagged as invalid data, and your systems won't pick it up as a valid piece of data and then try to access it or you know send out emails to it, right? It wouldn't cause a bunch of errors. So you know, another example of important checks to run at the point of ingestion so you can catch and invalidate and push this data out before it gets processed. Now, you also might want to do something like check for stats, right? And this is, you know, not individual values, but also understanding high level, hey, is the average sale amount normal? Is it between, you know, 50 and 200? And, you know, in case, hey, my products are only between 50 and 200 dollars. Um, is there a low variance? Is the standard deviation less than 100 um, in my sales amount? Do I not have really, you know, basically up and down data. Um, and there's really any kind of distribution check like min, max, um, checking for standard deviations and making sure you know your expected values fall within a standard deviation of those expected values. You can have those all done as stats checks. And this is really important, especially when you're doing with you know kind of ML or AI data, right? Where you want to make sure that data is normalized, it's of an expected value and within normal ranges, so you don't get super biased results. That's a big problem. If you don't have really high quality data, you might get biased results. This is a great way to make sure that hey my data is conforming at a large you know scale to the expected format uh, you know expected distribution of the data I want to use for this model training or model processing now when you're dealing with data that's constantly changing another big problem is you know hey how do I constantly adapt my baselines to match the new amount of data that I am having I have um, and that's where you're going to want to account for change right so here you know I want to check for hey is the change in my row count greater than or less than 50 percent um, I want to check is the change in my user sign up trend is it le is it uh, I want a warning if it's less than 20% or if it's gone down by negative 20% and a massive failure warning if it's gone down by you know 50% because I think that at that point something's gone wrong because people love my website right um, and so these are really good for just kind of saying hey you know making sure data is staying within normal trends right so anomaly detection you know here this is an anomaly threshold that's built into uh, Soda, where you can say, hey, you know, I want to check for this anomaly. If that th score threshold, if it's, you know, more, if the row count is, you know, greater than 2.0, what well, my expected row count is, throw a warning. If it's greater than 3.0, or, you know, then I want to throw a failure again. Um, and you want to make sure, you know, you're accounting for these changing values and making sure the change isn't outside your normal realm of expectation. Um, and if it is, you know, then you want to go take a closer look to make sure that that is the result of, you know, actual consumer behavior rather than just, you know, your data getting screwed up. And those are really all, I think, the data quality check best practices for SOTA I wanted to talk about today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If there's something I didn't cover, let me know in the comments below and I'll make another follow-up video. But I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.